What do you think about this this approach in terms of data sets of using data from the internet? Do you think the internet has enough structured data to teach AI about human civilization? Yeah, so I think the internet has a huge amount of data. I'm not sure if it's a complete enough set. I don't know that uh, text is enough for having a sufficiently powerful AGI as an outcome. Um, of course, there is audio and video and images yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so text by itself, I'm a little bit suspicious about. There's a ton of things we don't put in text, in writing, uh, just because they're obvious to us about how the world works and the physics of it and that things fall. We don't put that stuff in text because why would you? We share that understanding. And so text is a communication medium between humans, and it's not a uh, all-encompassing medium of knowledge about the world. But as you pointed out, we do have video, and we have images, and we have audio. And so I think that uh, that definitely helps a lot. But we haven't trained models uh, sufficiently uh, across both, across all of those modalities yet. Uh, so I think that's what a lot of people are interested in. But I wonder what that shared understanding of like what we might call common sense has to be learned, inferred in order to complete the sentence correctly. So maybe the fact that it's implied on the internet, the model is going to have to learn that, not by reading about it, by inferring it in the representation. So like common sense, just like we, I don't think we learn common sense. Like nobody says, tells us explicitly, we just figure it all out by mm -hmm. interacting with the world. Right. And so here's a model of reading about the way people interact with yeah. the world. It might have to infer that. I wonder. Yeah. Uh, you, you briefly worked on a project called the World of Bits, training an R RL system to take actions on the internet. Um, versus just consuming the internet, like we yep. talked about. Do you think there's a future for that kind of system, interacting with the internet to help the learning? Yes, I think that's probably the uh, the final frontier for a lot of these models, uh, because, um, so as you mentioned, when I was at OpenAI, I was working on this project, World of Bits, and basically it was the idea of giving neural networks access to a keyboard and a mouse. And uh, the idea is What could is possibly that, go wrong? <laughs> so basically you, um, you perceive the input of the uh, screen pixels, and uh, basically the state of the computer is sort of visualized uh, for human consumption in images of the web browser and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then you give the neural network the ability to press keyboards and use the mouse. And we we're trying to get it to, for example, complete bookings and you know interact with user interfaces. And- um, What'd you learn from that experience? Like what was some fun stuff? This is a super cool idea. Yeah. I mean, it's like, uh, yeah, I mean, the the step between observer to actor yeah. is a super fascinating step. Yeah, well, it's the universal interface in the digital realm, I would say. Yeah. And uh, there's a universal interface in like the physical realm, which in my mind is a humanoid form factor kind of thing. Uh, we can later talk about Optimus and so on, but mm -hmm. I feel like there's a, uh, they're kind of like a similar philosophy in some way, where the human, the world, the physical world is designed for the human form, mm -hmm. and the digital world is designed for the human form of seeing the screen and using keyword, no, keyboard and mouse. And so it's the universal, universal interface that can uh, basically uh, command the digital infrastructure we've built up for ourselves. And so it feels like a very powerful interface to to command and to build on top of. Uh, now, uh, to your question as to like what I learned from that, it's interesting because the world of bits was basically uh, too early. I think, at OpenAI at the time. Um, this is around 2015 or so. And the zeitgeist at that time was very different in AI from the zeitgeist today. At the time, everyone was super excited about reinforcement learning from scratch. Uh, this is the time of the Atari paper uh, where uh, neural networks were playing Atari games um, and beating humans in some cases, uh, AlphaGo and so on. So everyone's very excited about tra training neural networks from scratch using reinforcement learning um, directly. It turns out that reinforcement learning is an extremely inefficient way of training neural networks because you're taking all these actions and all these observations and you get some sparse rewards once in a while. So you do all this stuff based on all these inputs and once in a while you're like told, you did a good thing, you did a bad thing. And it's just an extremely hard problem. You can't learn from that. Uh, you can burn a forest <laughs> and you can sort of brute force through it. And we saw that I think with, uh, you know, with uh, Go and Dota and so on, and it does work. Uh, but it's extremely inefficient uh, and uh, not how you want to approach problems, uh, practically speaking. And so that's the approach that at the time we also took to World of Bits. Uh, we would uh, have an agent initialize randomly, so with keyboard mash and mouse mash and try to make a booking. And it just like revealed the insanity of that approach very quickly, where you have to stumble by the correct booking in order to get a reward of you did it correctly. And you're never gonna stumble by it by chance at random. So even with a simple web interface, there's too many options. 
there's just too many options uh, and uh, it's too sparse of a reward signal. And you're starting from scratch at the time. And so you don't know how to read. You don't understand pictures, images, buttons. Right. You don't understand what it means to like make a booking. Yeah. But now what's happened is uh, it is time to revisit that. And OpenAI is interested in this. Uh, companies like Adept are interested in this and so on. And uh, the idea is coming back uh, because the interface is very powerful. But now you're not training an agent from scratch. You are taking the GPT as an initialization. So GPT is pre-trained on all of text. And it understands what's a booking. It understands what's a sub submit. It understands um, quite a bit more. And so it already has those representations. They are very powerful. And that makes all of the training significantly more efficient um, and makes the problem tractable. Should the interaction be with the, like the way humans see it, with the buttons and the language, or should it be with the HTML, JavaScript, and the, and the CSS? Yeah. What's, what do you think is the better? Uh, so today, all of this interaction is mostly on the level of HTML, CSS, and so on. That's done uh, because of computational constraints. Uh, but I think ultimately, um, uh, everything is designed for human visual consumption. And so at the end of the day, there's all the additional information is in uh, the layout of the web page yeah. and what's next to you and what's a red background and all this kind of stuff and what it looks like visually. So I think that's the final frontier is we're taking in uh, pixels and we're giving out keyboard mouse commands. Uh, but I think it's impractical still today.